This is the third in a series of computer science lessons about wireless communication and digital signal processing. In this lesson, we'll focus on the radio frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum. You'll learn how the different radio frequency bands are used and why they have to be regulated. You'll also learn about radio signal power and why this too must be regulated. If everyone was free to generate and transmit radio waves at any frequency they liked, different signals at the same frequency would interfere with each other and the airwaves would quickly become very noisy and useless. The use of radio frequencies is therefore strictly controlled. To enable effective regulation, the radio frequency part of the electromagnetic spectrum is subdivided into a number of so-called RF bands, most of which are reserved for specific purposes. For example, the extremely low, super-low and ultra-low frequency bands between 3 Hz and 3 kHz are used for communication by submarines and by scientists to study earthquakes. The very low frequency band, VLF, between 3 kHz and 30 kHz is also used for submarine communication and in other maritime applications. That's because long wavelengths are particularly susceptible to disruption by changes in the atmosphere. However, long wavelengths are good at penetrating earth and rock, so VLF lends itself to a number of geophysics and mining applications. VLF is also used for wireless heart monitoring. The low frequency band lies between 30 and 300 kHz. This is used by amateur radio operators, aircraft beacons and to synchronise clocks. The low frequency band lends itself to long distance communication because signals at these particular wavelengths can diffract around obstacles and follow the curve of the Earth. Frequencies in the LF band are often called ground waves. Medium frequency radio waves between 300 kHz and 3 MHz are used for AM radio broadcasting and for communication and navigation by the marine and aviation industries. The so-called high frequency band, also known as shortwave radio, lies between 3 and 30 MHz. Frequencies in this range are known as sky waves because they can travel long distances by bouncing off the ionosphere, an electrically charged layer of the Earth's upper atmosphere. The high frequency band is used extensively in the aviation industry. It's also used for near field communication, NFC, amateur radio and weather broadcasting. There have been concerns recently that space rockets are responsible for punching holes in the ionosphere and this is having a detrimental effect on high frequency radio communication. Above this, between 30 and 300 MHz, is the very high frequency band, VHF. Within the VHF band, FM radio stations use frequencies between 87 and 108 MHz. Air traffic controllers communicate with aircraft at frequencies between 118 and 137 MHz. A plethora of other applications in the VHF band include digital audio broadcasting, DAB, two-way radio, that is walkie-talkies, radio telescopes, satellite communication, emergency services communication, remote control toys, baby monitors and medical scanners such as CT and MRI. Until fairly recently, VHF was also widely used for analog television broadcasting. Then comes the all-important ultra-high frequency band, UHF. UHF spans the 300 MHz to 3 GHz range. UHF is used in GPS navigation, commercial drones, pages and digital television broadcasting. It's also used by mobile phone networks or cellular networks as they are otherwise known. Specifically, the 4G mobile network in the United Kingdom operates between 790 MHz and 862 MHz. UHF is also used in Bluetooth device pairing and by Wi-Fi. 
Wi-Fi networks are able to operate within a range of frequencies between 2.4 GHz and 2.484 GHz. The super-high frequency band between 3 and 30 GHz has wavelengths between 1 and 10 cm, so it's also known as the centimeter band or the microwave band. SHF is used in microwave ovens because some frequencies within this range can be used to make water molecules vibrate, which heats up the food. SHF tends to work by line of sight only. That is, these frequencies are not very good at getting past obstacles. They can, however, carry a lot of information. SHF is therefore also used by Wi-Fi networks in a range of frequencies between 5.15 GHz and 5.85 GHz. Finally, there's the extremely high frequency band. At above 30 GHz, these so-called millimeter waves are used by airport security scanners, police speed traps, weapon systems, and 5G mobile phone networks. Generally speaking, the lower the frequency, the further the radio waves can travel. But the higher the frequency, the more information they can transmit. This is why a 4G mobile phone will get you a better reception in the countryside than a 5G phone. 4G also works well in built-up areas. On the other hand, 5G works better in areas where there are lots of people using it at the same time. And it's better for playing games and streaming videos. As previously mentioned, Wi-Fi networks can operate at frequencies between 2.4 GHz and 2.484 GHz. This is known simply as the 2.4 GHz frequency band. Wi-Fi can also operate at frequencies between 5.15 and 5.85 GHz, a range which is often referred to as the 5 GHz band, but it's more correctly known as the 5.8 GHz band. Wi-Fi signals in the 2.4 GHz band travel further than signals in the 5 GHz band and they are less prone to being blocked by walls, floors and other objects. But signals in the 5 GHz band carry more data and are therefore better for applications like gaming and streaming. A modern wireless access point will automatically switch from one frequency band to the other depending on the conditions. Between 5.925 and 7.125 GHz is the relatively new so-called 6 GHz band. The 6 GHz band has more than double the bandwidth of the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands. It can therefore carry twice as much data. However, the price to pay for a greatly increased data transmission rate is a greatly reduced range of operation. The 6 GHz band is part of the Wi-Fi 6E standard and will only work with devices that have been built to take advantage of it. You also need to be pretty close to a wireless access point. But frequency isn't the only factor when it comes to getting a good reception. The amplitude of a radio wave is a measure of its power and therefore the signal strength. This is often quoted in milliwatts. A watt is the standard unit of power, and a milliwatt is one thousandth of a watt. A typical Wi-Fi access point will transmit radio signals at between 50 and 100 milliwatts. A computer's wireless network interface controller is similar, somewhere between 10 and 100 milliwatts. A mobile phone, on the other hand, can output as much as 3,000 milliwatts when connected to a network. Since radio signals can range from very tiny to very large, a more convenient way to quote signal power is in decibels relative to milliwatts, dBm. Zero dBm is defined as one milliwatt. 10 dBm is 10 milliwatts. 20 dBm is 100. And 30 dBm is 1000 milliwatts, and so on. Minus 10 dBm is 0.1 of a milliwatt. Minus 20 is 0.01 of a milliwatt, and minus 30 equals 0.001 of a milliwatt, and so on. Of course, radio waves lose power. They attenuate as they travel through free space. 
They're also absorbed, at least to some extent, when they encounter obstacles such as walls and floors. One way to boost the performance of a device, therefore, would be to increase its power output. But this has to be carefully controlled, because electromagnetic radiation in high enough doses is known to damage our health. Indeed, a mobile phone manufacturer might well have their devices banned in certain countries, if they dare to exceed legal limits. <laughs>